Measuring NIR has become a routine job, both in academia and in industry. After the spectra have been collected, they are transferred to a computer, run through a software, and a regression model is built. But what happens in the software prior to model building? What type of pre-processing can be used? What are the similarities and differences between these? And are there any recommendations? Here you can see three recorded NIR spectra from 1100 to 2500 nanometers. These three samples are very simple. They are just mixtures of two sugars, glucose and fructose. The concentration of fructose is gradually increasing from 25% in the blue to 50% in the green and 75% in the red. As you can see from these three simple spectra, there are three features which are unwanted, especially from a PLS regression point of view. There's a fat baseline, there is no point in the spectrum where all the three spectra have the same absorbance value, the baseline has a slope or a curve, although calling it the baseline for NRR spectra is not entirely true, NRR spectra in general increase in absorption with increasing wavelengths. And there's also non-linearities in the spectra. Although the concentration ratio between the blue, red and green is 1 to 2 to 3, it is not possible to find a place in the spectra where the distances between the three lines are equidistant. Therefore, it is important to pre-process the spectra to correct for these unwanted effects. The pre-processing techniques which are most commonly used on NIR spectra can be divided into two main groups. Reference-dependent techniques such as OPLS, orthogonal scatter correction and optimized scaling and reference-independent techniques such as MSC, EMSC, D-trend, normalization and derivation. In this presentation, the focus will be on the reference-independent techniques. These techniques can further be divided into two subgroups, the scatter correction and derivation. In the first category, we'll go through MSC, ISC, EMSC, SNV and D-trend. And for the second category, savitsky goulet and Norris-Williams, as these by far are the ones most used by the NIR society. Do you want to go for a smooth ride? Try Sabichicole smoothing and derivation. Go smooth! Welcome back from the break. First we'll have a look at MSC and ISC. In order to do the corrections for both of these, you have to plot the raw spectrum versus reference, or vice versa. The following animation shows how this plot is made. After this plot has been established, the best fitted line according to regular least squares regressions is found. For MSC, the reference spectrum is along the x-axis and the raw is along the y-axis. The case is opposite for ISC, and thereby the name inverse scatter correction. Pre-processing of NIR, how can I help? What do I do with the line you have shown in the reference versus raw plot? This line gives the parameters later used in the actual correction of the spectrum. This means that currently the spectrum has not been corrected, but by using the parameters found as the slope and intercept of that line, it is possible to perform the correction. The corrected spectrum is calculated as a raw spectrum minus the intercept and divided by the slope. In general, the difference between MSC and ISC is small. However, as linear regression is used in finding the parameters, MSC assumes that the noise in the reference spectrum is much smaller than in the raw spectrum. Normally, the reference spectrum for MSC correction is the average over a set of samples, often the calibration set. By calculating the average across several spectra, the noise level in the spectrum is decreased by the square root of the number of samples. Therefore, the assumption holds in most cases. Opposed to this, the ISC assumes that the error in the raw spectrum is much lower than in the reference. This is never the case if the reference is calculated as the average of a set of spectra similar to the raw spectra and can only be the case if the reference spectrum was recorded using poorer settings in the instrument or a different instrument altogether. As this is seldom the case, we would not recommend using the inverse version of MSC. 
If we go a bit back and look at the answer given by our excellent Hotland expert, we can write the estimate of the parameters for the basic MSC in matrix form. It only includes a column of ones and a column of the reference spectra. The simplicity of the expansion is that it's possible to add columns to this matrix. Normally wavelength correction is what is added, but also other expansions are possible, like known spectra of either wanted or unwanted character. However, in practical applications, it is often difficult or impossible to extract such pure spectra. Therefore, the most useful expansion to the basic MSC is increased polynomial reference correction and or wavelength correction of different polynomial orders. Now that we have the new expanded ex equation, it is straightforward to both make it into the D-trend correction, simply removing the reference correction part, or back into the basic MSC by removing all higher order reference corrections and the wavelength correction. After finding the correction parameters, the actual correction is performed by the following two steps. First, the wavelength correction is performed, and then subsequently the reference correction. By looking at the first equation, adding higher order reference correction may seem simple and straightforward. However, solving the second equation turns into a bit more tricky as a second order reference correction requires solving a second order equation. This is not normally a problem, as you can see from this equation. However, third or higher order equations are not so straightforward and numerical analysis is required. Pre-processing of NIR, how may I be of assistance? You have put up a large equation of how the extended MSC can look like, and all of a sudden the number of possible parameters increases dramatically from the basic MSC. Then my question is, which parameter settings would you use? Unfortunately, there are no easy answers to that. However, we've not seen any data where using a second order reference correction pays off, so staying with no or first order reference correction should be sufficient. Furthermore, maximum third order wavelength correction is meaningful, and first order wavelength correction is seldom of value to the data. If you don't have time to run more than one parameter setting, using the first order reference correction and second order wavelength correction should give a good model in the end. Do you happen to have more time, or if you're just curious, you can try the following. Only first order reference correction, or only second order wavelength correction. This would enhance your understanding of the spectra. Standard normal variate, or SNV, is a simple scatter correction technique which uses the same type of equation as basic MSC. However, opposed to MSC, SNV does not use anything but the spectrum at hand during the pre-processing step. SNV corrects the original spectrum by subtracting the mean value of the spectrum and divide by the standard deviation. By looking at the effect of the raw spectrum, the only thing which changes is the value on the y-axis. However, the correction normally works very well. As just mentioned, basic MSC and SNV use the same equation for the correction of the data. If you use SNV and basic MSC on the same data set, as shown here in blue and red, we can then put these on top of each other in order to see if there is a difference between these two methods. As can be seen from this simple comparison, the difference between the two is minimal. Pre-processing of NIR, how can I help? So now you have your sound that there is very little difference between SNV and MSC. What would you choose between these? We suggest MSC, uh, but if you for some reason prefer SNV, we cannot see any uh, wrongdoing in using that. <laughs>